the opposite <laughs> stuff. I know, me neither. Hi, my name is Becky Norwood. I'm with Spotlight Publishing, and I am delighted to bring to you today John Mahoney in, in our expert interview series. John is um, a master at audiobooks, and, he, and we have had some really interesting discussions. And uh, one of the things about audiobooks is that it's the most highly consumed book type of manner in which people are, are reading or listening to books rather than just reading. So John, welcome to the call, to this interview. And um, why don't you introduce yourself, give a little more detail about who you are and what you do. Sure, glad to be here. Good to see you again, Becky. Thank you. Um, I'm John Mahoney. I live in Glendale, Arizona. I started recording audiobooks in 2001. And that went along quite well until the crash in 08. And then about 2009 and a half, we got back in business again, like many <laughs> others did. Yes. So my main, uh, I own a recording studio, but my main business is audio books, uh, producing audio books. And we do all kinds. Um, I hire local um actors, voice actors and actors to come in and perform the books. It's not like a voiceover, it's it's an audio book. So I want actors in there. I don't care if we're, if it's a tiny book on how to build a paper airplane. <laughs> I want an actor, <laughs> okay. An actual uh, voice actor, they, where they really have command of their voice, right? Yes, and that way, uh, the author, the publisher, everybody is much happier um, if there's some, uh, what do you call it? There's some emotion in it. There's you know, the, the care. <laughs> well, you know, I can say that uh, with my first book, I decided I was going to, to record it myself. And I was amazed at how much um, and stumbles and all oh, those things. And then I would get really going good on, on the track and the trash truck would go down the street. And of course I didn't have the soundproof room and all that good stuff. And I'm like, Ugh. so I kind of just set that aside. And of course at that point I had not met you. So let's get into a discussion so that, that those that are listening or will be listening to this understand how an audiobook is created and kind of the process and and why you do certain steps to make a book that is really really good so sure. how are audiobooks recorded and produced um it's it's a simple process it's simple to me because i've been doing it for 20 years now but an author or a publisher contacts me um, i ask them to send me a copy of the book in a pdf or a word document I then uh, look at the word count because that's how audiobooks are costed. That's how they're priced up. Um, once I give uh, my client, my potential client, a, uh, a figure, if it's within their budget, then I ask them to go on my website and listen to the voice actors because there's a dozen or more uh, beautiful voice actors to listen to. And also there's videos of them. And uh, so they go, okay, I would like to uh, entertain this one or these two. Um, and if they wish, I will have the voice actor come into, either come into the studio, but because of the virus today, I don't make them come into the studio. I have them uh, create, put a bunch of pillows around their phone and I have them do the audition into their smartphone. And the pillows are to keep, you know, reverberations and stuff away from- Like the air conditioning starting up and- <laughs> Air conditioning, plus if you're in a kitchen, your walls are hard. They're not like a like recording studio where all the walls are, they have sound absorption material. So if you put pillows around it, then you get a clearer voice. And that's what the customer wants to hear is uh, the, uh, the actor's voice and how they treat the characters or how they treat the book. Okay, so we do, we do an audition. I send that off to my client and if they like it, good. We, um, 
we, we, we settle up financially. I ask for 50% up front uh, to have everybody to have some skin in the game. Uh, and then I schedule the voice actor. The voice actor comes into the studio. Depending on the size of the book, um, it could be one session or it could be three, four, five sessions. Depending on the length of the book, really. Depending on the length of the book. Like if you have a, a 30 or 40 thousand word book, then depending on the voice actor, we, that can be done in one, one day or less. Um, some voice actors don't have, and it's nothing against them, but they don't have the stamina. Okay, so a 30 or 40,000 word book might take two sessions. That's a lot of words and to read. It is. And when I say stamina, the three things go wrong. Three of them. Okay. <laughs> um, their voice starts to get weak. And I'm listening all the time while we're recording. If I hear a weak voice, I stop the session and we schedule another one. That's number one. Number two is mentally. The brain can get tired and you start making mistake after mistake after mistake. I recognize that. So does the actor. We schedule the next session. Uh, the third issue would be eyesight and your eyes just get tired mm -hmm. and you start getting, you start making mistakes because of, uh, you know, tired eyes. Those are the three things that stop us. Uh, some of the voice actors, they have incredible stamina. Two of my voice actors, I've had them in here for eight, 10 hours at a time. Wow, that's amazing. And they're like Energizer bunnies. They just <laughs> keep going. Okay, <laughs> so. So why, you know, I've, I've had a lot of authors say that they want to record their own books. What is your thoughts that way? Um, in general, don't do it. It'll sound like you did it. Nothing personal to your first attempt, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like I did it. <laughs> but it sounds like you did it. Um, yeah. Professional voice actors have a special talent. Uh, maybe 1% of all the authors that uh, contact me that want to read their own book, they have what it takes to be a voice um, because they've been on radio or they've been on stage or screen um, or they're, they're, they're in a circuit uh, of, uh, you know, going to libraries and, and, and speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. And so they're used to speaking. They're used to talking with inflection and emotion and all that. Uh, those few, they do great uh, doing their own audiobooks. The 99%? Not so much. I, I recommend don't doing it. I won't turn them down, uh, but... Um, and, and for example, um, there are authors here in the Phoenix area. I, it, authors call me frequently and say, I want to do my own book. I'm here. Good. Come on in. I want you to audition for yourself. <laughs> okay. So they come on in, we audition them. I send them an MP3 of what they've done. And I ask them to listen to it over and over again. Uh, and is this what you want? out there in the United States, the public to hear. <laughs> 95 percent of the time they say, no, I want Alexandria to read my book. OK, <laughs> so, so I, I can nip that kind of stuff in the bud by uh, not being mean or nasty, just here. Here's reality. And I tell them the truth. So. Right. So so when when you have a voice actor that's in, I'm sure that because we're all human, there's going to be enough times that even a voice actor might read a word wrong or have the wrong inflection. What takes place after they've done their recording? What takes place after they've done the recording? I have. So, so you have to edit. Do a, is there an amount of editing that has to be done? There's auto, audio editing that must be done. And audio editing is does two main things. It takes breathing or breaths out where they don't belong. There's breaths that do belong and there's breaths that just don't belong. You don't want to hear a breath in the middle of between paragraphs, for example. We take that out. We take noise out that might be made accidentally. 
Um, and then, then that audio gets, I send it to one of three audio editors that I employ. Um, and I talk to them over the phone about the book and, and the pace of the book. That's the other thing that must be edited because when you're recording, the actor, they make mistakes mm -hmm. all the time. It's normal, it's how it is, it's life. Um, so you go back and you re-record that sentence or that line, um, but there might be too small of a space in between the sentence or too large of a space in between the sentence. And the editor has to make that, that stuff go smoothly. The words must go smoothly. Uh, it, you can't have starts and stops and jerking and all that kind of stuff. So that's, and that's what, bound to happen in, when, even with a professional. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the pros make, you know, tons of mistakes. Again, that's totally normal. Um, they're, they're eight feet away from me in a, a booth in the same room I'm in and I'm, and they're, they're, they're reading the book off of a tablet and I have a tablet. So I'm looking at the exact same words they are. I'm the first line of editing defense. So if they mispronounce something or skip a word that's crucial to that sentence or that paragraph, we stop and we, we retake that sentence or that passage. Um, it goes very quickly. Um, but anyway, did that answer? <laughs> yes, it did. Um, you know, because I think that you know you, the perception that it, even of a professional actor is is that they don't make any mistakes. That's not not the case because that's just kind of a normal thing that it is. But so, where do you find your voice actors? How do you come across the right kind of people to do this reading? Um, initially, I was putting ads. Uh, this it goes back, you know eight years or more, I was putting ads in Craigslist. <clears throat> I didn't know what else to do. Right. Uh, that was free at the time. So I put ads in Craigslist and I'd get a million calls from people that had no business <laughs> <laughs> wanting to be a voice actor. Out of those masses, I, I come across these magnificent people that know what they're doing. Uh, and they're the ones that you keep in your, uh, in your Rolodex, right? <laughs> in your stable, if, they, if you will. Um, and I treat them well, and they stick around. Uh, uh, many of the voice actors I have have been with me since, you know, for... for um, since the beginning, just about. Since the beginning. Um, and, and that's how it's done. Um, um, I, I run into people all the time on LinkedIn and Facebook who want to be uh, voice actors. And if they really are voice actors, I have them, um, if they're local, I don't deal with out of state voice actors. It's too hard. It's too hard to control. Mm -hmm. And when there are mistakes made, then you got to send that audio through the internet to them and they have to redo something. Whereas if I stick with local voice uh, voice actors, they come back into the studio. We're doing, they're in the same position, using the same microphone. Everything's the same and it works out well. I do have voice actors that live up in uh, Prescott. That's a long drive to um, retake or re-record one sentence right. that, is, that is wrong. OK, so I will try to um, have them again get on their smartphone and record that line, send it to me. Um, and if I can manipulate it so it sounds original, then I will. If I can't, then we have to bite the bullet and I have to drag, you know, Come on back. <laughs> Robin's butt from <laughs> pressed it down here again. So. Right. so um, um, speaking to the, to the cost of what it takes to get an audio book pr produced, how do you charge? So, uh, you know, what does a person is, expect? 
Yeah, the word count is how it's priced up. So approximately 9,000 words equals one hour of audio. So you're, you've written your book and it's a 65,000 word book. Divide 65,000 by 9,000. And that comes up with the number of hours your audio book will be approximately, you know, plus or minus a half an hour, sometimes an hour, depending on the pace it's read. Um, and then I, and then you multiply those hours times, I, I'm currently charging $258 per finished hour of audio. So if your book is seven and a half hours, let's say, seven and a half times 258 that would be the price i would quote you for your audio book that includes the voice actor single voice actor that includes recording editing mixing mastering it also includes um music or sound uh not like a soundtrack that's another that's a lot of work and a lot of money but i'll in, i'll include eight 10, 20, 30 second clips of music that I produce and write myself because it's it's not copywritten and it's royalty free. Mm -hmm. Therefore, nobody gets in trouble. I'm a musician and I have fun doing that too. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, what what about the marketing part of it? Well, how do how does that work? How you know they've put a they've already got a lot of money into the editing that you know the just the print version and then the formatting the book covers all the things that that entails now they have an audio as well how do they get exposure for it okay um i will attempt to talk the author or publisher into uploading that audio book into the amazon system themselves because if I do it, then the royalties go direct every month. The royalties go into my checking, my business checking account. And then I become a bookkeeper. And every month I have to write checks to the authors <laughs> and publishers. Um, and I charge $5 fee for each check I write. Um, so I would prefer if the if my client uploads it, because you know, then they'll get paid directly. Um, that That's okay. In, in the Amazon system, there's audible.com, there's iTunes and Amazon. So you, aud you upload the, that audio into Amazon and it goes to those three places. But you must have a book in Amazon or an ebook, paper book or ebook because that audio book has to link has to, connect, to your existing book. Right. Okay, that's one way of marketing. <clears throat> Unless you pay Amazon a bunch of money, they don't do anything for you. It just sits there and people want a, a cozy mystery or something like that. Well, they have to search that and then they'll search through the hundreds of cozy mysteries uh, and hopefully stream yours or download yours, buy yours. Um, other kinds of marketing, there are book marketers out there. Be careful. Yeah, there's a lot of them too. And there's a lot of them. And they claim to do all this stuff. And you know what they do? They upload it into the Amazon system and charge you a bunch of money and they sit back and do nothing. Um, that's many of them that I've come across. Um, there's a local woman here who's a book marketer. I would recommend you to her. She's, I've known her for years and I trust her. Um, I don't know, I don't personally know any other ones, but uh, as I come across them and become, and, and I trust them, I will, I, will, I will partner with them and we'll do business. Right. Well, there's so, so many, you know, for it's the same with that, it, whether it's an audio or a physical book, there's a lot of work that goes into the marketing and the marketing's the key because I've yeah. had authors where 
they thought it was just would happen by magic, just the fact that it's on Amazon. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't because there's so much being published now. Yeah. And so the whole key to success for any of this is to be able to make sure that that you're doing your marketing, whether that's standing on stage and, and uh, doing that way, being very active in your social media, building a following, all yeah. these things are so, so very important. It's not going to happen if you just upload something to Amazon. It's just no. not going to get found. Social media is important. Excuse mm. me. Your, your website is very important. And, right. and if you don't do it, take the classes, whatever it takes, but get out there. Get out there and market your book. That's the only way. Your independence anyway. Um, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get you know, a big or a mid-sized publisher uh, to work for you. And, I, and luck has you know, a lot to do with that. Um, sometimes they foot the bill and, and get a lot of stuff done. But yeah, I almost for, never hear of that anymore. I mean, no, they, that, that happens less and less. And what, you know, yeah. what, what I've done is, you know, I encourage my authors to get um, booked on podcasts you know, use the media, whatever the media is, get involved in as many opportunities that they can to get their voices heard, you know, yep. and, and each, each time they're on a, on a podcast or on a webinar or something like that, mention their book and make sure that the, that the listening public knows it's available. Use your email. And even in the pages of their written book, we find that we can make autoresponder, you know, tick, give them a link to get the 10 free tips or the 10 this or free video series or whatever, because you're building a list that way and you can keep the conversation going. Yeah. But, um, I do one of the best ways I've grown my business is by using social media and doing things like this, you know, right. because, because that's where you get the exposure. Just you've got to be out there making your message heard. Yeah. In your business, I think you're doing a magnificent thing by, by interviewing not just people like me, but authors, authors, authors. Mm -hmm. And, and they the need that exposure uh, all the time. And they can't give up. They just can't. It has know. to be a daily, you know, just a, a real lot of strategy. But also for some of us, it's take it takes, um, you know, training to learn how to be have a presence and speak you know, from the from the stage, even if it's from Zoom or you know some other platform like that, using yeah. the social medias, but it it takes a lot of effort. And most of my authors are are business people, and they're showcasing their expertise, so they have many opportunities to to uh, you know whether it's networking circles or other other types of things. It's just amazing. Yeah. Authors but, authors have so many opportunities that they don't think of, mm -hmm. and they just. They just gloss over them because they're not they're not marketers right and 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 if there's a class out there for marketing take there's, it there's a ton of tool sets that are available to all of us yeah. and i'm not 100 percent familiar with your business but i'm sure it's part of your business it is it, each author where we have that conversation the first time we meet you know, no. but, you know, we implement a lot of the marketing or help them to implement it. And um, a lot of strategy goes behind it to make sure that that, yeah. that happens. So, you know, the author, the author needs to hook up with a uh, an honest group of people, which is a publisher. If you're going to do audio, hook up with a good studio. Um, today, audio studios Audio books are produced all over the world. I produce books from different countries all over the world. So I never get to meet the people except like this, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. You get to meet them, but they never get to really see my studio. <laughs> Am I organized? Am I a, a sloppy trainer? <laughs> okay. So the, the authors that are local in the Phoenix area, um, if they're interested, I invite them in. We have a cup of coffee. Uh, I show them around and, and they can see that I am a, <laughs> a bit anal retentive, but I'm a very organized person because I have to be. Too many books go through this business for me to 
mix up books, mix up papers. It, it's it's too it easy to do. Same yeah. way with the publishing part of it, the paper. Pardon ones. Me? The same way with the publishing, yeah. the, the paper ones yeah. and Kindles. So do you do children's book as well? Oh yeah, I love children's books most of all. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I, they're fun to do. I get to hire the voice actors that are playing little kids or or a grandparent reading the book to the little you know the grand grandchild. Uh, there are sound effects in there. I love. I have a big um, audio file full of sound effects that I can draw from. And if a new one crops up, then I become Foley man and create my own sound effects. And if I can't do that, if it's a, a European bus noise, then I know where to go online and get that sound effect. Oh, uh, that's so cool. <laughs> to do it. But anyway, they're fun to do. They're short and sweet, uh, typically. And, uh, and yeah. uh, Amazon today accepts PDF files. So if you have a children's book, you can take all those graphics, all those pictures, and put them in a, um, a PDF file that's not larger, I think 10 or 20 megabytes, and send that along with the upload of the audio, and that'll be sold with the book. Um, there are, I've been doing, I've done several this year so far which I, I call uh, video slideshows, which is taking the pages of the, the kid's book and putting it in a slideshow with music and sound effects and the voice actor, you know, the, the audio is in there and it's an, it's an actual video slideshow um, of that book. And they're fun to do. Those would be really fun to do. And, and, and but, uh, you can't, what I do is I, I, I make the video and it's a huge honking file and <laughs> nobody takes that stuff. So then I put it, I turn it into a YouTube link and you can send a link anywhere billions of times a day if you want to. Um, and, and then all that, all those people have to do is click on that link and bam, your video pops up. Um, I don't know how to sell that. Um, I think um, what I, I talked about with one of my children's books is is because we have the print book and also the Kindle, but we 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 talked about putting the link to that um, right yeah. in the book so that they have that to deal with. You know, yeah. so it's you really can, you, can to do it. You, you know for five bucks more or ten bucks more, or whatever you, you can here's here's a link. Right. Um, so that's one way market it and, and make a couple of bucks at the same time. Yeah. Well, this has been an awesome interview. I've just enjoyed this so much. So, so John is um, with Raven Audiobooks, right? That's ravenaudiobooks.com. <laughs> ravenaudiobooks.com. And really think about the diversity and the added listens, the actual um, consuming of the content of what you're your wisdom and expertise is. Think about adding that to your repertoire. And we do have it when in our uh, Spotlight Publishing Package, that's always an option that they're you're able to choose is having that audiobook as that extra reach out to people that will not pick up a book. They travel a lot, they do whatever, or they just don't like to read, but they like to, to listen. And yeah. they'll and, use that as I, I forgot to mention this. It's very important that audiobooks are now the number one selling way that people Consume. read slash listen to books. Right. Uh, Ebooks is number two, and paper books is number three. So it's a pretty amazing why, world we live in. <laughs> why I have big bags under my eyes. <laughs> work, work, work. No play. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Thank you, John. This is a great Thank interview. Thank you very much and enjoyed it. I hope those that have been listening enjoy it as well. And Me too. Take all right. care all. Bye-bye. Thank you.